Hi, I'm Colette and I'm here today for Witch Ways to talk to you about doing witchcraft in cities. What to do if you're very sensitive? Do you need to adapt your spells? Do you need more protection than you usually do? I'd love to hear in the comments what kind of issues come up for you when working magic in the cities. Enjoy! Sometimes there's not much difference in how you carry out your magic. It's more the general feeling of not being as connected to nature as you might be if you lived in a more rural setting. For example, some of the ways you might adapt your magic to living in the city is to play background music when you're doing a spell or having a ritual so that the specific things you say can't be overheard, creating screening with protective plants or trellises or curtains or screenings on balconies and porches that you can open and close. You can even add protective charms or bundles of protective plants to those barriers if you like. You can get really creative in having privacy, which is one of the main issues that comes up for people. When you're trying to connect to the earth and to nature, I find it really helpful to have outdoor altars if you can. Even placing them in a window where they can interact with the outside world is very helpful. Sometimes things on them can be disguised as art or obviously witchy things can be hidden behind other objects where they won't be seen by the casual passerby. And you can also charge rocks with protection, place them around your altar, and also ask them to connect you and the altar to the land and the general area. Seasonal offerings can be placed discreetly in parks if you have no land area around your home. An offering can also be going out and picking up garbage uh, from the plantings or parks or wild areas. If you do get out somewhere wild, it helps to renew your connections with the land and to bring that consciously back with you into the city. My friend Larry calls that walking the wild into the hearth. You can also carry extra water with you and ask that it pick up some of that wild energy and then bring it back into town and use it to water your plants and as offerings to help bring a little bit of that wild energy into your life and home. Having plants is really helpful in connecting with the earth. Even if they're just potted plants that you have indoors or out on a balcony or the porch, you can give offerings to them with water. You can ask them to help you connect to the land. You can bring them actual dirt from your area as an offering and to help connect them to the area and the land. Birds and insects will carry your messages as will plant pheromones out into the greater world when you do magic with your plants or give them offerings. You can also create a simple blessing that you repeat every time you water your plants and envision that going out to the land. You can also sometimes gently bury charms in potted if you work with bones, plants usually like having them around on the soil or in the soil. However, I would not bury or place baneful charms, generally speaking, inside of potted plants or in your yard. It might have a bad effect on them. You can also charge colored ribbons with the energy of a season to celebrate it and hang them outdoors or on your plants. I also tend to buy ornaments during the time of winter solstice of things that I enjoy and value in my life and place them up as holiday decorations. Although most of the people that come in my house know that I'm a witch. I want to talk about water. It's really such a precious gift and I think we really just take it for granted when we live in town. We turn on the faucet and there it is, unless we live in a very dry area. So one of the things that I personally find helpful is to find out where my water comes from 
in the area that I live. And then I try to either go there and offer biodegradable offerings nearby or to give verbal appreciation and gratitude. Or if I can't do that, to visualize a place, try and find pictures of it, look at it on a map and send some energy and appreciation to that area. You can also create a simple phrase thanking water and acknowledging its importance whenever you see water around town, even if it's just in big puddles. Creating seasonal essences and moon water is one way to bring the energy of the earth and the sky into your workings. I have a video on making moon water that I'll link in the description and you make seasonal essences the same way. You just place a bowl of water outside at the peak of the season with intention that it gathers some of that seasonal energy. Large old trees really help to anchor sense of place in a landscape. The more trees there are in general, the better the habitat and the ecosystem is doing and the more the energy is flowing. Trees are very, very magical as well as being supportive of life. I like to visit old trees in my neighborhood, give them offerings, talk to them, make friends with them, and I ask that they and their descendants survive and thrive. If you have areas in town that are high and have unobstructed views, there are great places to do seasonal magic at quiet times of day. My ancestors long, long ago used to do offerings and seasonal appreciation rituals on high points where they could view the land, often in places that lined up with solar risings or moon risings of the season. I also think that high points in a city, because they kind of give you an overview, are really, really good places to do magical work around best possible outcome for issues that are affecting a number of people. And I also think they're really great places to do work around social justice and sustainability of local communities. My ancestor work took a big leap forward when I moved back into town from the country. And one thing that you can do with ancestor work is to tend the graves of any local ancestors that are buried where you are, whether they're adopted ancestors or related to you by blood, doesn't matter, they're still your ancestors. You can leave offerings of water, generally unless the graveyard or cemetery is pretty old, it's not a good idea to just leave plant detritus around. Someone just picks it up and throws it in the garbage. Most ancestors in general are really, really happy to help you with anything that involves you doing well in your life and the descendant line continuing, which includes issues around money, food, housing, health, things like that. And in exchange, what they like is to be remembered, named, and honored. In cities, we are surrounded by a lot more of the spiritual and emotional baggage of people around us, or just the general overflow of the struggles of everyday life. And if you are an especially sensitive person or a strongly empathic witch, you might consider adding another layer of protection by charming your curtains. I especially like to do this with the shears that you can keep closed most of the time if you need to, and you could just charge them to add an extra layer of protection. To do this, you can wash your curtains and then fold them up in a pile. In between the layers, you can add sprigs, ideally fresh but dried works, of protective plants like rosemary, blue vervain, or agrimony. Sometimes stores have fresh rosemary that you can buy, and then you just create some kind of simple phrase like, beautiful rosemary, I ask you to help create a filter of protection and put it into these curtains. Then you just let it sit for a few hours, remove the herbs, dispose of them by composting or burning them, and then hang your curtains. 
If you don't have access to herbs and you're good at visualization, you can also visualize a protective net or filter going into your curtains as lines or a patterns. You can visualize sigils or other protective symbols that you know about and push them into your curtains while visualizing the intent of protection and just that extra little layer that protects you from overflow of other people's emotions. This is a spell that will likely need to be renewed and refreshed fairly regularly. It will depend on where you live and what's around you, how often you have to do that. When you live in the city, the things that you regularly do, like adding charms and herb bundles to doorways and windows as protection is great, but you might also consider placing protection around the outside of your house as well, or the edges and corners of your yard. This can look like burying protective herbs. It can look like wood engraved with protective symbols. It can be body fluids that you sprinkle around the edges of your property, which is very, very, very old protective magic. You can also add extra protection in any area where you feel like there's any kind of issue or problem nearby. Sometimes charms can also be hidden behind plaques that appear to be decorative. Sometimes older cities are built on the remains of older construction. In particular places like port towns often have underground tunnels still existing that go down to the docks and there's a lot of stagnant energy and ghosts and those who are the unquiet dead who lived in the area that tend to gravitate to those sections of town and to those tunnels. It's a good idea to research the history of the area where you live and your immediate neighborhood. And if you're in the Americas, that includes the interactions between the colonizers and the local indigenous people. Get to know who the indigenous people were, what happened to them, where they are now. And obviously reparations are a big, big topic. And a lot of that does need to be addressed at the federal level, but I think that there's a lot that we personally can do to support that work. It's not always those big picture interactions. It can also just be the human drama of everyday life. Think about how many people might have lived where you live. Think about all the things that might have gone on, for instance, if you live in an apartment building. I have a really great section in a video on setting up a home that's called Triple Clearing, which is a great prelude to any protection work and I think is good to do periodically, especially if you live in a house where there's a lot of other people that come through or somewhere where a lot of people have lived or a very busy section of town. I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. After clearing, it's really helpful to put protection up right away. You might want to have it already prepared. And if you live in town in a house with a lot of other people above and below you, like an apartment, if you can, I think it's really helpful to put protection on the ceiling and on the floor as well. And you have to get creative with doing this. Not of all of you are going to be able to do that, but a lot of you will be able to if you get creative. So if you can, one of the ways this might look is hanging a pot or decorative vase of some kind or some kind of object and ornament from the ceiling and placing a protective charm inside it. For the floors, if you have a carpet, you can write a protective charm or symbol on a piece of paper and put it under the carpet. If you can paint where you live, you can paint a protective symbol or words 
on the ceiling and then paint over it. It's really good to make sure you cover it thoroughly and it won't bleed through. Test a little patch with the color that you're going to use to make sure before you do it. But I think if you get creative, it can be a really helpful addition having protection above and below. Working with local animals around you is also a good way to connect to the magic of the place and the land where you live. And what I like to do is just make a map or a list of all the beings around me that are in physical bodies. So I start with below, what's below me, the slugs, the snails, the bugs, the insects, the snakes. I look at the middle world, who lives there, the rats, the mice, the squirrels, the raccoons, the possums, the cats, the dogs, sometimes the occasional coyote, and the overworld, the birds, the vultures, the hawks, the crows, the songbirds, all the birds that live above and anything else that you might discern there. Once you know who's around you, you can research the magic they carry online or in books, or you can do what your ancestors probably did, which is to notice what they carry in the landscape. What are the jobs? What do they do? What are their personalities like? For instance, crows are very companionable. They're family oriented. They're very protective. They are very helpful to each other and they act as an early warning system. But notice what they do where you live. It might be different. You can learn a lot from just observing. And if you're slow and patient, some of them might agree to work with you. Animals can be really helpful magically. You can use discarded body parts that you find from an ethical store out in the wild or in your local neighborhood. Another example would be that beaks teeth and claws are really good protection magic and that might just be claws from your dog or cat friend that you put in a charm bundle as protection always remember to give back in some way i like to say survive and thrive may you and your descendants survive and thrive you can also offer food i think it's important that it be food that is good for them and appropriate to what they would normally eat. I think doing magic in the city comes down to having a bit more protection, especially if you're very psychically open and doing what our ancestors have always done, which is observe a place, notice what's happening there, physically and spiritually, and then taking appropriate action based on the things that they had on hand. I'd love to hear in the comments if there are any special things that you do based on where you live magically. And I'd also really love it if you like my content and you feel like it, that you check out the links to my Patreon page and my website. And until I see you next time, stay safe and be well.